identity of Assyria and its role in this final jubilee cycle. Learn of the pending judgments that are to be soon poured out as a result of transgressing the sabbatical years. Sighted Moon. Well, Shalom, we are back here in the second half, and uh, you know, we, we've been talking about holidays here, and, and, and we, we've kind of discussed the idea of, of Hanukkah, and how that is the festival of lights, and, and I guess, Joseph, that's like perfect segue into uh, another festival of lights that's celebrated the same time of year. Uh, you know, the, all, the, all the hype is going on around the Western world right now. Well, I shouldn't even say it, All over the world right now. Uh, about a In the East, it's, it's called Diwali. In the yeah, East. The, the, a specific festival of lights that is, is just, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the best time of year, you know, for most people. That's, that's, what, <laughs> that's what most people would call it. You get to take off work. It, it's also... You, it's also the highest time for suicides. There you go. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, you're right. It, it's a good segue. But, you know, in, in what people have started to do, which they do, and they say, well, it's not the same thing. You know, I'm going to put the Torah back in the Hanukkah. Yeah. I'm going to capture it away from all these people selling, you know, marketing my holy day, you know, like Thanksgiving used to be about turkeys, and now it's all turkeys doing all their their stupid things, getting ready for Christmas for a month. <laughs> That's and true. it's become marketing. So, and then people say, "I'm going to put Jesus back into Christmas, get back to the pure part of keeping Christmas about Jesus." Trouble is, there's no pure thing about Christmas, and now we have the. The, the people keeping Hanukkah, adding a Hanukkah bush to their celebrations. So the Hanukkah bush is a miniature Christmas tree that's about, you know, a, a foot, two feet tall that they put on a table. It looks just like a Christmas, but it's not a Christmas tree because that's, you know, we don't do Christmas. But it's a Hanukkah bush. And it's really what it is, is a hypocritical bush. Yeah. So people come out from being Christians or learning Torah and and when they're learning Torah, they believe they're learning Judaism. And so in order to do that, they start, got to start keeping Hanukkah. And they, so they make it easier for their kids and for the relatives who don't understand. They put up a Hanukkah bush. Well, it's kind of like Christmas, but it's not Christmas. And, you know, it's, it's more, you know, it's like the Maccabees. And that's what they're doing. So where do we get this Christmas tree from? Now, the Germans brought it here to North America in the 1800s. The Puritans would not allow it. It was against the law in North America to keep Christmas because it was a pagan feast. The Puritans from Plymouth Rock would not allow you to keep Christmas. Only when the mass immigration of Germans came in the 1800s did Christmas become or catch on. It become the national holiday that it has today. Those of you listening, do you know that Christmas is found in your Bible? It's throughout your Bible. And we're going to show you some of those scriptures here right now. And by the time you're done, the first, my first year, when I started, first learned about the Sabbath, and I started keeping the Sabbath, then I learned about the Holy Days, and I said, man, what's all this stuff? It was <clears throat> two months before Christmas that I learned about Christmas. That was in 1983. And I've never forgotten this sermon. We're going to go through some of those things today. So, first of all, I would like Krista mm -hmm. to read to you where the Bible talks about setting up a Christmas tree in Jeremiah. All right. Jeremiah 10, uh, verse 2. Thus says Yehovah, do not learn the way of the nations, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. For the customs of the people are delusion, because it, because it is wood cut from the forest, the work of the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. They decorate it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, so that it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field are they, and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear so them, for they can do no harm, nor can they do any good. 
So you take a couple pieces of wood, strap them across the bottom of the tree, you nail it together, you hang on these gold and, and red balls on it, and uh, that famous, I'm trying to think of that famous song right now, um, Silver, Silver and Gold. And gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Silver and Gold, Silver, I can't think of the tune. Silver That's pretty good that I forgot it. Oh, see, Silver. now you now you remind me of it. <laughs> yeah, we used to sing that all the time. That's what Jeremiah is describing here. And you're keeping Christmas to celebrate the birth of Jesus? Jesus wasn't born yet when Jeremiah wrote this, uh, what's this, 600 B.C.? Yeah. What's he talking about? Pagan festivals, the way of the heathen, the way of the pagans. You're keeping a pagan festival by keeping Christmas. Ooh, there's that word, terrible word, pagan. <laughs> so let's look at what this is. Krista, can you go to Acts is it Acts 5.27, I think it is. Okay, Acts 5. And this is this is Stephen just before he gets stoned. And he gets stoned because he's telling these people their sins, the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is after Yeshua has been killed. And Stephen's going to be the first martyr. And he's telling them, here are the gods that you've been worshiping all these years. Not Jehovah, these two gods. And... Here's their symbols. So go ahead, Krista. Let, let people stone you. Oh, well, you know, I don't know if they will because I'm not sure this is the right one. I'll read it. Acts, Acts 5, 20, 27, isn't it? Well, um, it just says when they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priest questioned, saying, and I'm not seeing what... Acts 5.27, but you shall carry Sikot, your king. Where, uh, did I quote the wrong verse here? Acts 5. This is the, the five chapters, Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I gave you the wrong oh, verse. Here, yeah, okay. we're, it's, it's in uh, chapter seven. 7. Yeah, it's not in 6 either. Maybe. That's where Stephen is, anyways. It's not in six. <laughs> okay. I don't know where it is, but I'll read it to you. But you shall carry Sikot, your king, and Kiyun, your images, the star symbol of your God, which you made for yourself. Okay? So that's what they're doing. You've lifted up the shrine of Molech and the star of your God, Riphan, the idols you made to worship. What are we talking about here? The god Molech is December 25th. That's his birthday. That's his special day. That's the day the sun starts to come again. This is the god Molech that he's talking about. This is who the ten tribes of Israel were worshipping back then. Who's the star god? That's the star of David. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know, I have some friends of mine, Skulk and Elsa Glee. They do an article, or did an article in what in their website called Set Apart People. If you've never read Set Apart People, I highly recommend it. After you read read, read Sighted Moon, go and read Set Apart People. They did an article a little while ago called Defiling the Land. How do you defile the land? Hmm. I you know it was a good I didn't know. I had an idea, but they spelt it out. When you bring in a symbol of God, whether it's your crucifix, your star of David, your little angel, your little cherubims that you put up, your little flags of the star of Israel all over your house, or these angels all over your house, or your crucifixes all over your house, or hanging from your mirror in your car or your neck, you've just put God in a box. And you actually what you've done is you put a false God around your neck, a false symbol for a god on your the mirror of your car. You have defiled yourself, and you've defiled your car, you've defiled your house by putting these symbols up there, these little statues of angels. Jehovah said, do not make images of yeah. him. 
Oh, but we know better than that, so we do it. And that's what Stephen is talking about here. They carry these images with them. That's what Rachel did when she fled Laban. She stole all the idols. Rachel is the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. Yeah. Rachel is the one where we get this craving to have idols instead of Jehovah as our God. Molech is the God that people worship around the world at this time of year, whether it's Diwali, Hanukkah, or Christmas. Mm. Whether it's Eastern Orthodox or uh, Syrian religion, Christians, or Catholicism, it's all the worship of Molech. Now, Molech had a number of names. One of his names was the Great Enlightener. The Great Enlightener, and this is a play on words. So you got to study the old Hebrew, the old Akkadian language, and it's a play on words because he's enlightening the world. What's he enlightening the world with? It's the same as uh, Satan in the Garden of Eden, enlightening Eve that she's going to live forever, that God's not telling her the truth. He's feeding her from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of enlightenment, not the tree of uh, life. So this god of enlightenment is also called Oranos. Now go and look him up in mythology. It's, it's talking about Ham hmm. and Cush, who are leading the rebellion against Noah and Shem. And Nimrod is the 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 one who becomes emperor out of this but to prevent him from being uh, taken over by any of his children he kills all his children yeah. Nimrod who is called Saint Nicholas or is also known as Santa Claus used to go around his temple chasing all the virgins that were sent to him. And every virgin he caught, he seduced. In other words, he raped. That's what you're celebrating. Mm -hmm. A nymphomaniac. That's what this day is about. That's who you're celebrating here today. Or not today at Christmas, at Hanukkah. You know, Joseph, that's an interesting thing here, right? You're, you're talking about <laughs> a, a man addicted to 